Let's talk about wall squats. So generally what you're doing is you're putting your back on a wall. I'll show you here in a sec. And you're, you're letting your knees bend down, you're letting your butt sink down, and you just hold it till your legs burn. So this is really common in all sorts of sporting events, like, like at the end of your basketball practice or whatever, your coach might tell you to go sit up against the wall and see who lasts the longest. Um, it's really good for like a, a metabolic training effect, a metabolic training class, because uh, it all it requires is a wall, right, and a body. Uh, so let's let's kind of look at what it's going to look like. I'm not going to move the camera. I'm just going to show you here for a second. So I set my back up on the wall. My feet are out like this, and I can just squat down and hold here. So after a while, this gets really tired. My <laughs> legs start to burn and it's really uncomfortable. So we've talked about that general variation being really useful for conditioning, right? And, and getting yourself to last through something that is fatiguing, tiring, or mentally tough. Now, I wanna talk about a little subtle cueing that we can do for this variation that we can then use to increase your mobility pretty quickly. So if I come back over to the wall, one thing nobody ever checks for is the back position. And so the backs are generally a little bit more extended. You see how my hand can fit in between the wall and my back. And that puts a little extra pressure on the front of my hip here and therefore on my quads. So those quads will get more tired more quickly. What I want to do instead is exhale, tuck my hips back and flatten my back against the wall. So now already I feel my glutes supporting me a lot more. I still feel my quad a lot because they're disadvantaged right now. They're getting most of the torque. So it's normal. It's not gonna feel drastically different, but the big thing that you wanna focus on is make sure that your back is in the wall here. And you can even use your hands. You see how I was doing that already. You use your hands to push your body backward, not to reach forward off the wall so much, but to push your back into the wall to help you feel it, to help you find it. So positioning the pelvic bones, the pelvic floor and the, the glute muscles and turning on the hamstrings a little bit, those can help you unlock some mobility, help you train some hip mobility, help you shut off your neck sometimes, right? So common things that people will mess up. Biggest thing is they won't put their back on the wall, right? Because it's really hard to hold this position. So you got to make sure you do that. Second, you got to make sure you can breathe while you're doing it. And if you can talk into the camera, maybe that's good. Or maybe you're just going to start hyperventilating like I am. And then last thing, I don't want you looking down at the ground. It helps you kind of turn on your abs a little bit. But what I want is for you to dissociate this ab from your neck. I want your neck to stay relaxed, right? So if I, I can look down to set up my lower body here, but then I need to make sure I'm looking forward. And that just gives my neck curvature a better position, tells my nervous system to stay relaxed, tells me to turn on the muscles that I need to turn on. So that's a cool way for you to rethink your wall squats, to use them to increase your mobility rather than just making your brain tolerate pain better.